Alright. Uh, so I just wanted to come real quick, check in. I want you to uh this book right here by Stacey Abrams, Our Time Is Now. This this joint crazy. If you live in Georgia, I would say you should certainly read about some of the voter suppression tactics that they've done. I mean, she goes through the history of like what voting tax uh voting suppression, you know, kind of went like how it's gone throughout history. And it's not always that it was a Democrat or a Republican thing. It just happens to be a Republican thing now because the electorate is growing, right? It's becoming more diverse. It's becoming a lot more uh, inclusive. And the, and the Democratic coalition tent is wider, right? You kind of widening the tent. So, um, you know, Republicans are digging in their heels. And the only way to win some of these districts, some of these states, is to suppress people's ability to vote, right? And she kind of breaks the chapters down accordingly as well. She's like, um, everything old is new again. So deny and delay is basically like, um, basically they just go back through the same tactics in a different way. So it used to be a poll tax where you literally would have to, uh, you know, pay a tax to go and vote. But now it's, uh, you know, you were a prisoner, right? We let you out and we still call, say that uh, you're not able to vote until you pay all uh, fees that you owe, which is crazy that you get a fee for getting incarcerated. That's crazy to me, but you owe some sort of money because it wasn't cool for you to just stop me from making bread right now. You had to charge me money. Like, my G, like, that's wild. And like, do you really want to get some recidivism rates down? Because that's, that's not even logical. If anybody that looks at the system understands what that is, but I divert. Now you see organizations stepping up and even though, because this is down in Florida, right? That was the law that passed in the 2018 election. Now, you know, the governor, um, I think Rick DeSantis is down there, or he might be for Arizona. But essentially, my man is like, um, okay, but technically, you're not a citizen until you, uh, you know, you you pay the the fines. Instead of just saying that you're a citizen, like, or, or you're free, right? You're 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 free from jail. Like that could have just been a qualification. Like I was no longer behind bars, but instead they added this extra, you, you see what I'm going with it. But that's wild to me. Like, bro, you work in overtime, right? So instead of like shifting your stance and coming up with policies that are a little bit more palatable to more people, right? Like if, if, if the Republican party wanted to, they could go get black people right now. Right. And, 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 they would have to abandon some of their base, but like, look, like, I mean, maybe your ideas aren't things that the that are they're not popular opinion. Like, you lost a popular vote last time, right? So if you lose, like, it, you've never been the most popular opinions. Like, you've never held the most popular opinions, even if you won the election, right? Like, this is just thinking about like. So maybe you can pull it to the left so you don't have to suppress, like, use voter suppression tactics. Like, I just never, like, voter fraud, come on. That's the comp, like, that's what somebody come at you with, like, voter fraud. Okay, come on. Now let's go look at any reputable study. You know, there's a lot of studies out there about voter fraud. And if you could, if you, if you could find me three that outline widespread, massive voting fraud that would have changed the uh, election, except for the 8th district in North Carolina. Now, that was actually a, uh, you know, that was actually a Republican candidate, and they closed the loophole there. So I guess the loophole was that, um, you know, you needed to be able to see if somebody was uh, verified. Um, 
Actually, let me not speak too deeply on it because I, I can't remember what the loophole was, but I do remember the election commission saying that they had closed that loophole, but it was easily found out. Like, it's not like it was something that it was easy for them to hide because it had a paper trail on how to find it out. So like you tried to do it, but we caught it immediately. Right. And you went to court and, and you had to forfeit it. You, it was a big embarrassment. So most election systems, the way that I've seen them like going have been very efficient and everyone is state run. So, every, so you got to think there's 50 states. So, and, um, you, you know, you got, you kind of got to think about that. Like all of them are cheating at the exact same way. Like there's no like national entity sitting on top of them. Now they could slow down mail with the postal service, but is that really going to happen? Right? Like if I really want to vote, like I could drop my ballot off at the election office. Right? So instead of putting it in the mail, you could drop it off in the office. Right? And if, and if I do it early, then that means that I can make sure, um, you know, that there's adequate enough time for me to get to the office, right? So right when I get my ballot, so you should be requesting a ballot in the mail immediately so that it's on the way, right? Request your ballot. And then, and then shoot, at this point, you need to, um, you know, fill it out, getting back in. I mean, everybody's mind at this point is pretty much made up. So get get your ballot in as early as possible. There's nothing that's going to happen in this next two months. There's nothing, nothing that will make me change my mind. Nothing. And I and I can say that with conviction. You know what I mean? Um, so get your ballot in early. Um, get this book a try. It's a really solid uh, read. Um, and shoot, have a great weekend.